All right, I'm gonna go over the homework uh, as the video, just so then we know that I've gone over every single concept. I added a couple of extras to the end, so then we know how to do those. All right, so for the first one, the three is gonna multiply with every single number that's in the front. So the whole numbers that are in the front are gonna all multiply with each other. So you're distributing the three x, y to everything. So the three goes first, three times the four, so 3 times the 4, that's going to give us a 12, plus sign stays here. 3 times the 2, that's going to make a 6. Now, the x is now multiplying with everything here, which causes the x to add itself to the exponents. So x times x squared is going to make x to the third. x times x third is going to make x to the fourth. Now the y is gonna multiply with everything. y times y is y squared. y times y to the second is now going to make y to the third. So like I said, the numbers in the front are gonna multiply with the numbers in the front. The x and the y are also multiplying, but the end result is literally it's adding another exponent to each one. Okay, let's see it done again over here. So. 5 times 3, that's going to make 15. The minus stays there. 5 times 2, that's going to make 10. Now the x3 is adding itself to x, making it x to the fourth. x3 is adding itself to x, making it to the x to the fourth. Now nothing's happened to the y, so the y just stays where it is. All right. Now, factoring is the reverse of what we just did. So instead of multiplying in, we're dividing out. So what divides perfectly into 6 and 12? The number is 6. So I'm going to divide everything by 6 in just a second. How many x's do they have in common? Well, this has 1x, and this has 2x's. So they only have 1x in common. So I'm going to take an x over here. Now, a y and a y, they only have 1y in common. So I'm going to take out a y. Now, here we go. So if I divide everything by 6, I'm going to have a 1 here. I'm going to have a plus sign here, and I'm going to have a 2 there. If I take away an x from each one of these, this one's left with no x's, and this is left with just 1. So I'm going to leave an x right here. And if I take one y away from everything, I'm left with no y's. So there's my final answer. Same thing here. What divides perfectly into 20 and 30? The answer is 10. How many x's do they have in common? Well, this has 3 x's. This has 5 x's multiplying with each other. So how many do they have in common? They have 3. So I'm going to take 3 out of there. How many z's do they have in common? None. How many y's do they have in common? None. So that's it. That's all I'm removing. So I'm dividing everything by 10, making this 2. And that one over there, 3. Then I'm removing 3x's from each one. So here I'm going to be left with no x's. And here I'm going to be left with 2x's. Then how many z's? None. So let me put a little line through here so you can tell it's a z. And then the y, nothing happened to that one either. And that is it. So now let me solve these. These are one-step equations. The way you solve a one-step equation is whatever is happening to the x, you do the opposite to the other side. So the opposite of dividing by 3 would be multiplying by 3. That would cancel here. Multiply by 3. x equals 36. What's the opposite of plus 5? Minus 5. That goes away. Minus 5. We're left with x equals 2. Okay, it's hard, getting harder to write now that I'm getting lower. All right, so the opposite of minus 9 is plus 9, plus 9. X is all by itself. This becomes 21. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. So X equals 2. And that's it.